consciousness doesn't come from the brain it transcends it. So what does that mean for us? Luckily, that means that our consciousness, our soul is eternal. And once we pass away here in this 3D reality on earth, that doesn't mean that life is over for us. Neurosurgeon Eben Alexander takes us through his very, very near death experience in this book, Proof of Heaven. Now there are two things that make Dr. Alexander's experience so profound over all of the other near death experiences out there. The first is, as a scientist, he had no prior beliefs or faiths in a higher power before. He was extremely science-based and really didn't believe that there was anything after this life. And the second thing is that his brain was completely off. Whereas most people that experience a near-death experience, they have certain parts of their brain that are still technically on. I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to go super, super far into what that means because honestly, it's a little over my head. But in this video, we're going to get into the proof of heaven, the proof of the afterlife from the point of view of someone who experienced it and never believed in it before. If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I created this channel to help you build a more loving and beautiful and fulfilling life through self-mastery and spirituality. And today I speak the release of fear over death over you. He graduated from the University of North Carolina, got his MD at Duke, and even taught at Harvard for 15 years. So very qualified to write a book on this topic. So the first aspect of this that I want to talk about is his point on why we can't remember, why we don't know that we have this consciousness while we're here on earth. Because isn't that the big question? Isn't the big question, well, is this it? What's after this? Does heaven exist? Does hell exist? Am I really just a human body and then there's blackness for the rest of my life? Well, there's a reason that we don't know those things while we're here on earth. And luckily, he was able to, along with many other near-death experiencers, go through this traumatic event and actually come back with some of those answers. So basically what he says is because there's so much infinite knowledge that our consciousness possesses, it would actually be too much for us to handle here within our human brains. And so then what that would do is actually slow down our progress here on earth and not allow us to be in the here and now and actually live out our physical lives as we previously essentially signed up to do before we were born as human. On top of that, it's almost like our decision making here on earth when we face evil or temptation or all these things would actually mean less if we were aware of the magnitude of our consciousness. And this is the information that he actually received from what he calls Om, otherwise known as God. Like he received this information like so many other near-death experiencers do as soon as they start to reach that afterlife. They get all of the answers to the universe. So he got this information directly from God who allowed him to remember this as he came back here onto earth. And then while we're speaking about evil, I wanna talk about that too because for a lot of people, no matter what faith you have or religion, you know, for me, it's Christianity. A, a big question I often ask is, okay, well, why does God allow there to be evil? Like that's just something that is really difficult for me and many others to wrap their heads around. And within this experience, Dr. Alexander actually got the answer to that question. He says that with evil, which is in all of the universes, all of the planets that exist infinitely, if there's no evil, then there's no free will. And if there's no free will, then there's no potential for growth, which is our entire purpose of coming back here on this planet. Now, while this is true, he says that he was able to see that evil is a lot more present here on Earth than it is on other planets and other universes, and that it's able to gain more influence here on Earth, which makes it much tougher for us to live <laughs> the life that we all dream of, of actually bringing heaven onto Earth. That amount of evil cannot exist in these higher realms. 
So us being at this very low 3D realm, that's why it is so potent here. But the good news is, is that being said, he still said that our earth and our world is overwhelmingly filled with love more than evil. Even though sometimes, obviously for us, it can really feel like the opposite. I thought that that was so empowering and beautiful and just like relieving. You know, like it's relieving to know that there's way more love present on this earth than there is evil. And that being said, he said if he had one single thing to bring back to this earth, it's that love is the basis of all. He's talking about not just this crazy love that we think about that God gives us, which obviously is there, but the everyday little love that we see, whether it's the way we look at our pets or take care of our neighbors or help someone in need or whatever that may be. And that all of these universes, all of these planets infinitely out there, everything, everything is based around love. How beautiful, how beautiful is that? Oh, I could cry. <laughs> We, with our human brains, obviously, think about love as this abstract concept, right? Like it's just like, oh, this thing out there, and oh, I love you, it's this feeling. But what Dr. Alexander was saying is that it's actually concrete, that our truest, deepest selves, our souls, our consciousness, we are completely free. And so in a way, sometimes it can feel like we're trapped in this human body on this world. We're brave. We were brave to come back onto this planet and we chose to do so, so that we could evolve and so that we could grow and so that we could transcend. He said the only thing we are supposed to do while we're here on earth, check this out, is grow closer to the divine. That's it. That's our job. Our consciousness, our souls, it doesn't need money. It doesn't need fame. It doesn't need status. All of those things are our human mind, our ego. They're things that we think actually matter, but they don't. As soon as we leave this earth, that stuff we don't care about. We might not even remember we don't need it. We don't want it. We don't care about it. It has no authority over us like it does here on earth. And I thought that this was so beautiful because what do we try to do here on earth? Get money, get status, get fame, get all these things, right? But there's actually no point to that. And studying these near-death experiences is nothing matters. Nothing matters except growth and growing closer to God and loving others and taking care of others. And how simple and how beautiful and how fulfilling is that? We don't need to care about money. We don't need to care about all of those things. They don't matter. And I think that is so freeing. As far as growing closer to God and taking care of one another, he talks about how powerful and energizing and pure that prayer actually is and that he could see that and he could feel that in the afterlife. And so it's something that a lot of us, especially you know Christians like myself, really believe in the power of prayer. But he actually came back as a non-believer with proof on how powerful it is. And so how amazing is that, is that we already have this faith. For me, it just magnetized that faith, knowing that what I believe to be true is. Okay, he said that nothing nothing can separate you from God. He's actually part of our DNA. And I believe I was actually reading an article the other day where they found that. They found, I'll try to post it here if I can find it, but it was really incredible the way that spirituality and science are really starting to merge. Science is starting to unfold what faith and what consciousness and what love already knows. You know, I know it can feel frustrating, at least for me, that I want to live in that higher consciousness. I want to live out of that pure love. I don't want to be bogged down by the heaviness of what being a human and what living on earth can be. But the thing is, is we can actually change that. And that's what's so beautiful about this is he was talking about how the actual, the left side of our brain, which is the logical side of our brain, is our ego. It is our barrier to the knowledge that our higher self and our consciousness and our soul possess. So the more that we can break down our ego, the more that we can draw closer to God, the more we can unlock this higher knowledge that we already possess. It's already in us, it's already in you. He talks about in the afterlife that if you know or think of something 
as your pure consciousness while you're in the afterlife. It takes you there and it gets easier and easier each time. And so what's that showing us is once we can learn to begin to crumble that ego and move more into our higher consciousness while we're in our human bodies, the more that we can think and know something otherwise known as having faith, we will get there. And each time it gets easier and easier. So he's telling us right there that manifestation is real. So for people that don't believe it, you know, I'm not here to tell you that I'm right or wrong or, you know, Dr. Alexander's right or wrong, but you know, there's a reason that so many people talk about it. And the reason is, is because it's real. And what he talks about in the book is that all of this, all of the afterlife, all our consciousness is way more real than anything here on earth. Like, we think this is real, but it's actually not. Now, and before you become skeptical about something, think about this. He talks about this in the book. To be a skeptic, you have to analyze both sides. And the majority of us, and I'm sure myself included at times in my life with different subjects, we are skeptics by dismissing the other side of things or the other knowledge that we personally haven't even looked into. So we're skeptical without knowing the information. So you can't actually be a skeptic unless you learn about it, unless you saturate your mind with that information so that then you can make a more sound decision on whatever your belief is. So if you're sitting there listening to this video and you're like, I don't believe in this, I don't believe in the afterlife, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in manifestation, whatever, have you looked into it though? Have you researched it? And that is another huge point I'm going to take with me. So this video is getting a little long. I just had a lot to talk about because I actually read this entire book in a day. So I hope you guys found some value in this video. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and what your questions are and if you've read this book. I am so excited to know that there's so much more than just this life on earth and it allows me to unlock and live this life in a more beautiful way. And I hope that it does for you too. I love you guys so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so we can hang out, hang out again next week and I will talk to you soon.